From Muhlenberg College, this is 2400 Chew. I'm Tammy Katzoff, and in each episode of this podcast, I talk to one Muhlenberg graduate about their current work and the industry in which that work is done. For this episode, I spoke with Joe Yonner, class of 1994, who is the Environmental Sustainability Manager for the city of Ventura, California. I sat down with Joe in the offices of Ventura's maintenance yard, where he's worked for 17 years. And as I do with all of these interviews, I began the conversation by asking how and when he became interested in his occupation. Well, really at Muhlenberg, I started off there as a pre-med major. So I was taking biology, chemistry, physics, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And quickly realized that I wasn't smart enough to be a doctor. And the sad realization, but... Because of that, I started kind of branching out in the types of classes that I was taking, and I started taking some sort of more natural biology classes versus the the medical, you know, the medical, like the neurology and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so I branched out a little bit. I took some political science classes that had an environmental focus and kind of put two and two together, realized that I really enjoyed the environmental topic, felt that it was worthwhile to to put a lot of time and energy into it and just mm-hmm. kind of flowed from there. I sort of had that ethic for a long time. My dad was an environmentalist and I have uh, early memories of smashing aluminum cans with a, a big uh, thing <laughs> at a recycling center back in like the 70s. So, ah. so he was pretty progressive and I think I picked up on that ethic and kind of carried it with me and then once I got to Muhlenberg, I guess it, it sort of flourished because I was able to kind of really investigate that area a little bit more. So how did you make it to the city of Ventura? What was it, What's that story? Oh, gosh. So after Muhlenberg, I moved to Philadelphia and was living there and just kind of doing odd jobs. Met my future wife. We decided we thought we'd go see what it's like to move and live in California. So we loaded up our old Mercedes Benz diesel with everything that we owned and trucked on over to California. Wow. Didn't have jobs, barely had a place to stay. We had like two weeks with a friend that was guaranteed. And beyond that, we had nothing else. So I have a relative that lives in Carmel, California, which is near Monterey, Mm -hmm. just south, like an hour and a half south of San Francisco. Wasn't Clint Eastwood the mayor? He was the mayor Uh of Carmel, California. Uh Very good. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, just unbelievably gorgeous place. We said, hey, this is pretty cool. Found an apartment, kind of got odd jobs and started living there. Of course, I'm like, okay, I got to get get my career going and applied for some jobs. And I, you know, just never really worked out and finally decided that I needed to go back and get a graduate degree. So I Mm -hmm. applied to um, University of California, Santa Barbara. They have a very good uh, environmental science and management graduate program, and I was fortunate enough to get in there and moved down to Santa Barbara, another gorgeous place, and did my two years of graduate school there. I started working here soon after graduate school in uh, 2002 and kind of worked my way up a little bit, started at the ground level as a called an environmental specialist, just kind of working on city environmental programs and then became a supervisor and now I'm a manager, division manager. Tell us about what are your biggest uh, responsibilities? Essentially overseeing a number of the environmental programs that um, you know a city would be involved with. So Ventura has about 108,000 people, so it's a decent sized city. Mm-hmm. California is a pretty heavily regulated state and so there's sort of a lot of environmental requirements that cities have to meet that are sort of mandated by the state. Um, Other, obviously other cities and other uh, states have the same thing, but California, I think tends to be a little, a little more heavy handed. Mm -hmm. So, um, so part of what I do is sort of solid waste recycling related. So there's, um, you know, waste diversion requirements established by the state. And so we have to make sure that all the businesses and homeowners and everybody generating waste are, doing things properly, putting things in the recycle bin. Um, We manage a contract with the trash hauler. So we make sure that there's things in their contract that they have to meet as far as waste diversion and recycling. And then we do a lot of outreach and education. So 
you know, we have a green business program where we try to get businesses to be a little more environmentally minded and they get recognized for good things that they're doing. You know, we do a lot of events and things where we have information for the public. So Mm. just a lot of engaging with the public, engaging with school kids. We do a lot of um, school presentations and teach them about waste reduction recycling. So it's a pretty robust program Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the more important things that we do. So in addition to solid waste recycling, we also do stormwater management. So everything, when the rain hits the ground and runs into the storm drain system, that's really heavily regulated because it can pick up pollutants along the way and Mm. can carry pollutants to rivers and lakes and the ocean ultimately. So that's very highly regulated and there's a lot of things the city needs to do to make sure that that water is as clean as possible when it gets to our water bodies. So I oversee that program for the city Mm -hmm. for the most part. And then I also do our streets maintenance and sidewalks program. So that's kind of a side one, not really environmentally related, mm. but, but I do it. <laughs> so that just something got piled on. Uh, and who do you report to? I report to the public works director. So he kind of oversees engineering, construction, all those types of things that a city does. Do you have a typical day at work? And if you do, what is that like? Uh, yeah, I suppose there's a typical day, a lot of meetings. So probably a third of the day is meetings typically. Other third of the day is writing, you know, writing reports or mm. writing emails. I'm not sure what I do the other third. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There must be something. Uh, there's got to be. I do something. No, it's just um, making things happen. Yeah. I mean, that's really, I'm, I'm kind of a, so mid-level manager, was, which is basically what I am as a connection between the high-level managers and then, you know, the people that, that do the work. And so I'm. I'm the conduit for information and um, kind of providing resources to the people that go out and get things done. So my job is to make sure that they have what they need, mm-hmm. um, a lot of budget stuff. So making sure that the the budget is done properly and mm-hmm. paperwork and contracts and mm-hmm. all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not really fun, but it's good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So uh, what are some of the bigger challenges that you and your team face day to day? I mean, budget is a challenge. Yeah. So there's only so much money to to do what you want to do. And there's there are a lot of expectations from the community, whether it's sidewalks or streets or things that they feel like the city should be doing. There's a lot of expectation. And as local government, you you interface directly with the community. Um, you know, at state or federal level, there's a separation there mm. for the most part. Mm-hmm. Local government, city government, they're coming here and knocking on the door and and asking you questions or they're calling you directly on the phone. So there's really a close connection to the community and there's expectations and we only have so much resources. So a lot of it's kind of managing those expectations. We really want to serve the community and do as much as we can, uh, but there's limitations to that. And so I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges. Mm. I think from an environmental perspective, it's just the enormity of our environmental problems globally, locally, regionally. Um, you know, it can be pretty overwhelming. And sometimes you feel like you're you know, emptying a, the ocean with a thimble with the stuff that you do. And, you know, you have to keep perspective on that, mm. kind of just realize, hey, I got to do what I can and not sort of beat myself up if we're continuing to drive off a cliff. <laughs> it right. sounds horrible. Right, right. So that can be challenging and, and really, you know, communicating important messages to the public and trying to put a, a local public face on some of those issues. Can we talk about just one specific project? Yeah, something that either that you're working on now or that came to fruition that you were really happy about. I think one is, um, it's called Solarize, and it's not a unique to Ventura. We kind of stole the idea, but we kind of took it and ran with it, and it's become pretty successful. And and basically what that is, is so residential solar. So here in California, it's really pretty popular to put solar panels on your roof. And Mm. California is a great environment for that. We got a lot of sun and uh, no snow on the roof. So (laughs) even in the wintertime, we're generating electricity. 
So the solar eyes program is essentially a program to encourage and incentivize people to put solar on the roof to kind of provide some extra extra incentive there. And so we kind of developed the program from scratch and rolled it out to the community and it was really pretty popular and got a lot of positive community feedback for that program. And, mm. um, you know, since we started it, there's, I think, 130 or so solar systems have been installed through the program. So kind of a neat thing, you know, where you can actually, there's a tangible benefit to what you did. Mm -hmm. You can put a number on it. Whereas sometimes you do community outreach and it's kind of like, I don't know if anybody's listening. We're going to keep yelling and hopefully they are, but right. but it's not always the case. This one is sort of a measurable outcome that was, um, I think that we would deem a success. So, nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, how many people work here? So my group, there's about 20 people in my group. Mm -hmm. Not real big, but, um, you know, it's a good size. The city as a whole has about 500 and, I'm sorry, 620 employees currently. And that's police department, fire department, water, wastewater, parks and recreation, public works. So we're a full, what's called a full service city where essentially we provide the vast majority of the services like water, wastewater, street maintenance, policing, fire services. Mm. It's all provided by the city. So you've been here a while. Uh, what do you see as some of the perks of uh, working for the city of Ventura and what are some of the downsides? Don't be afraid to go negative unless you oh, can. Oh, I'm afraid to go negative. No. Unless you should be afraid to go negative. No, no. Okay, we'll start with the positive. Yeah, let's, let's do positive. <laughs> um, I, I alluded to it before, but that, that connection to the community mm -hmm. where you're um, – you're really, you, you see the benefit of your works. So it's not, you know, uh, kind of an abstract thing or, you know, if you're in, in the private sector and you're driving sales, like, yes, you can see, sometimes you can visualize or, or see the benefit that you're providing to that organization. I think with, with local government, you, you can see it specifically within the community and someone will send a nice email like, Hey, really appreciate you guys doing X, Y, Z. And mm -hmm. you know, it feels, feels good. So I think that's probably one of the main things. It's good to work in a team environment. Uh -huh. So it's really, it's not competitive. So it's not like I look across the aisle at some other guy, you know, and we're, we're battling for the sales numbers It you know, it's not that kind of environment or, uh, you know, it's really kind of a team environment. We have common goals, common vision, and we work together towards those goals and so that that's it's a good place to be in in a work environment mm -hmm. where your your challenge is is meeting the expectations of the community and um, doing the best you can to do that. So that's a great thing as well. I mean, one thing Venture is an amazing community. It's you know it's it's like as I mentioned, it's on the ocean. The weather's amazing all year round for the most part. So there there's that. And then it's a good community to live in. I'm, I'm happy. I live here. I work here. My family, I have I have three kids. And they all go to school here. They're part of the community. And so it really kind of draws you in. And, you know, you could sort of really aggressively pursue a career and, you know, either in the private sector or kind of working your way up maybe in a larger city. But at this point, it's just I love what I do. I'm challenged every day. Um, I like the people that I work with, and um, I don't really have a need to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's where I am now. Maybe at some point I'll I'll be drawn to another mm. job. But well, in, in a way, you're working for yourself because for you sure. are working for the betterment of yourself oh, and your absolutely. family. So yeah. it's kind of all Ventura. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's actually very odd because. You know, when I drive through the streets here, I'm like, oh, look at that pothole or, oh, that sidewalk's <laughs> in horrible condition. Like in some way that's a curse because it's like you see you see all the things that should be better. And, you know, sometimes you can fix those things. Sometimes you can't. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's I'm, I'm invested in this community. I want to make it better. And and, yeah, I, guess, I suppose I see the benefits of that. And my family does and my neighbors do. And so it's kind of neat. No, that is kind of cool. You've been at, at one place most of your career, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you have a, a kind of a unique vantage point of past and, and changes in your field. So can you talk about some of the major changes that you have seen doing this kind of work? I think one of the biggest things is sort of the focus of sustainability as a career. You know, often it's there, there's sub 
you know, subsections of sustainability or people would pursue a, a, a degree in ecology or natural resources or maybe, um, you know, political science or a law degree that had sort of a environmental focus. And I mean, it's probably been a long time at this point, but sustainability programs at schools have just flourished. Mm -hmm. uh, and really the UC Santa Barbara, where I went to grad school, the, the, the focus of that program is to create professionals that will go out into the workplace essentially. And they, it could be in business. It could be at a corporation. My, my focus was corporate environmental management. And the idea was you would go out to, you know, a large company and you would help develop sustainability programs for those companies because there's really a demand for that. There's a lot of public pressure for corporate America to be as, as green as they possibly can. And so you need professionals that can, can do that. So that was one of the focuses of the program. And so I think, and we're actually very fortunate here. I'll, actually, the people that I work with um, under me, three of them have came from that school. Mm. So it, the neat thing is it's breeding sort of this local supply of really talented, smart uh, environmental professionals. And for me, it's great because they, they've they been amazing to work with. And uh, I think a lot of businesses in the area have really benefited from those people coming out of school and having a great skill set and being able to get out in the workplace and, and make things happen. So future changes. Let's, let's talk about that. Um, what do you see coming down the pike for not only your team, but anyone who's doing this type of work? What are you going to have to be aware of to continue to be successful? That's a good question. Well, I think one thing is anticipating the regulatory environment. So it's good to kind of understand what the environment is like and sort of, okay, where do we need to be in five years uh, and have an understanding of that. Funding is, is an issue always to, to implement programs. You need money. I mean, it's just the way it is. And so um, being aware of, of what, what you're going to be doing and, and hopefully trying to align uh, your revenue and you know, your resources to be able to do those things effectively. So I think really having that perspective and looking forward, hopefully anticipating not only the the regulatory environment, but also the you know the the public perspective on things, and you know are we are we in step with the way things are going um, in the community and socially, making sure we're kind of up on all that stuff is important. And how do you stay up on things? You know, it's I I have to admit, being a manager, I used to have time where I could read publications and kind of stay up on the latest and, you know, subscribe to a ton of e-newsletters and, you know, really kind of stay in tune professionally with what was going on. And I just, I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I find in some ways that I'm, I'm actually, I know less than what I did before because I'm doing different things. Like I'm doing budget, I'm doing, I'm sitting in meetings, I'm, you know, stuff that is extremely important, but, um, doesn't necessarily grow you professionally. Right. So it has been a challenge. Uh, yeah, I tried to read the news and kind of, you know, just see what's going on in you know, the LA Times or the New York Times, see if mm. there's any articles that are pretty interesting. You know, I don't really go in depth anymore. I'm not reading the, the wonky publications. <laughs> the academic journals? So the academic journals mm -hmm. is no longer on my reading list, but you kind of do what you can. Right. Um, it's certainly good to be up on what's going on. Do so. you monitor or pay attention to or keep one eye on other municipalities and see what they're doing and what worked for them and what's Absolutely. not working for them? If anything, I'm going to study what they're doing because they're facing most of the same problems that I am. And so if there is a successful program that another city is doing, I want to know about it and see if it's something that maybe we can emulate or that we may want to do. So mm -hmm. So it's really important to have your finger on the pulse of best practices in your profession. And, and so I, I would say that's probably the most important thing that I do um, in terms of kind of staying up on it. Just in case there might be people out there who 
um, are thinking about pursuing your line of work, yeah. uh, what would you tell them to do? What, what are th- some things that they really should be doing um, so that they can get to where you are? I would say try to volunteer or get an internship. If the city that you live in or one close by has, um, you know, maybe an environmental division or they have some some folks that work on that type of thing, go and volunteer and kind of get a sense of what they do and try to determine if it's something that, that you might be interested in doing. As somebody who hires people, you're you're much more comfortable hiring somebody that you have familiarity with and sure. you've had experience with and you know them. So there's an advantage to that. And again, I'd, I'll promote local government. It's challenging, but it's rewarding. This episode of 2400 Chew was produced by me, Tammy Katzoff, Associate Director of the Muhlenberg College Career Center. It was recorded on location by Paul Kremposky and engineered by Morgan Wolper at the studios of WMUH Allentown, Pennsylvania. Our opening and closing music from Cowboy Bebop is performed by the Muhlenberg College Jazz Big Band. 